Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about painting the color white. Um, the two most difficult colors to paint are generally white and black. There are usually also the colors that I see people have the most or make the most mistakes with, have the most challenges with, uh, etc. So today we're going to talk all about painting white and I've got a couple colors on my palette ready to go. We can ignore this part down here. This is for a separate project. Um, but we've got some colors up here that we're going to talk through. So first off, um, right here, I've got a nice sort of dark gray. This is Secret Weapon Rubber Highlight, uh, which is just a nice dark gray color. I've got some Scale 75 Arctic Blue, because I'm. this is going to be a cold white. Um, if you're going to ever do a warm white, you just shift everything I'm going to talk about here, you know, into the warm spectrum. So instead of using this, like, very, very light blue, you can use a very light ivory or pale color or extremely light brown or anything like that. Uh, I have some white gray here from Vallejo Model Air. And then I have some War Colors white, which is right here. Now, over here, I've got a secret weapon. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Let's, we're going to push that to the side. This is all about the secret weapons to painting white. Because actually, you can get a nice, smooth white really easy. One of the things I see people constantly have challenges with is white goes chalky, White doesn't look good. It's hard to cover their base coat. Whatever the whatever the example, okay. But but we're gonna put all that to the side. White can actually be very easy to paint and to paint realistically. And so to show you that, I'm gonna take you through it. I'm gonna take you through it with our little friend, the assassin here. Now, um, I like my Skaven assassins. We're gonna zoom in on this guy. Bring the camera up a little bit so he's in focus. Um, I like my Skaven assassins to be. Uh, actually having white sort of cloaks instead of the traditional black because I think that's pretty pimp. If you're killing people and wearing like a stark white outfit, uh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so it was, uh, I was a storm shadow guy, not a snake eyes guy, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, but at any rate, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this back part of him to sort of display this. I'm going to use this nice, big, long, sweeping cloak and some of this up here because it's a really good and easy, like it has these nice swoops and it's a very easy way to, to talk about how we do it. So the first thing I'll say is all I did to this guy so far is Zenithal Prime him. This is just standard, uh, you know, my standard Panzer uh, dark gray and then um, uh, some cold gray from a 45 degree angle and white from above. Now, if you don't have an airbrush to do this kind of zenithal priming, you can do it with a rattle can. And my first advice for painting white is do not try to paint white over pure black primer. I don't know how many times I have to say this in my life, but if you're trying to paint white over pure black primer, you've, you've done it wrong. You, you are wrong immediately, out of the rip, incorrect, okay? And I, so if you say, if you say to me, Vince, I can't rattle can prime because it's too cold out or too wet out or too something. First of all, not true. Take your miniature, keep your rattle can inside, walk out into your garage, spray, bring it in, set it in your bathroom, turn the fan on. Number one. You can spray your rattle can any time of year. Number two, if you don't have an airbrush, that's okay. Let's say all you can manage to do is get black down on, on, a, on a miniature. Fine. If that's what you can manage, I don't care. That's just fine. Then take a nice white, grab your dry brush, and dry brush over the guy in a downward angle. So go like this, down and off, down and off, down and off, like at a high speed. So, you know, okay. Um, so for example, I'll do it on this guy right here. I'll get a little bit of my secret white over here on my dry brush, wipe it into my paper towel, test it on the back of my hand, a little bit more, there we go. And then we just, like if I was doing this over black, I would do a heavier dry brush instead of a fairly light one like I'm doing now. And just by setting yourself up with something like this, by having yourself not going over pure black, you make your life so much easier. So that's step number one. Stop making your life intentionally hard and trying to paint white over pure black. That's number one. Okay. 
But anyway, we've got this guy's Zenithold. Now we got a little extra highlight. Look at that, he pops a little more. Which is fine. We can set ourselves up for success even with pure white like that. Okay. So, what we're going to do though here is we're going to start and we're going to use a little bit of um, of our old friend Flow Aid. So, I've got a little bit of Flow Aid here. I'm just going to drop some of that on the palette right there. This is a uh, War Colors Flow Improver. Um, I like it. You can use whatever you want. You can go buy it from the art stores and get like Liquitex or whatever. That's all fine. I'm going to get some of that. I'm going to take some of this very sort of cold blue gray because it's for rubber. And down here in the shadows, I'm just going to start laying that in there. It's actually a little bit brighter than what my shadows already are, but that's all right. Then I'm just, I'm not cleaning my brush. Go back into the flow aid and I'm going to go into my Arctic blue here. Wipe off my excess and just start dragging it forward. I'm not making a huge impact on the color here because these aren't big moves. Then I'm going to go into my white gray. I'm just doing this quick. So the next key is I'm using the flow improver to keep everything moving. White and bright colors like this, they want to get chalky real easy. By using the flow improver and working quickly with a wet brush, we keep everything nice and, and liquidy, we prevent that chalking. Now I'm gonna go into my War Colors White, and I'm just gonna kinda of smooth it down. Okay. I can see where I need a little bit of my darker gray, so I'll kinda of pull that in down there. And then I'm gonna go get my Flow Aid going, go into my Arctic Blue, Grab a little white gray. Right? We just keep going and eventually we're bringing it up to white. Now, I'm gonna let that rest for a minute and talk. So, right there already, like just that quick, we've got a pretty nice little, pretty nice little white going on. We've got some nice soft gradients. You know, all in all, if we had other colors to pop this thing off, um, you know, if we get, if we turn his skin uh, somewhat brown colored, right? We get some dark fur going on here, maybe on his feet. Yeah, we'll get some other color in here to make a little ratty skin tone of some stuff I've just randomly got on my palette. See if we can make that work. Yeah, that'll work. A nice little pink nose. So I'm just laying these down so we have something to contrast this against. In camera. Some other color. Okay. So you can see how, you know, he comes off as, as pretty. Like that looks pretty white. But let's say you really, really, really want to pop out your white, right? If you want to get something really, really strong, you want bright, clean, smooth white, and you need a lot of it, okay? So I'll work up here on his, on his shoulder while I'm waiting for that to dry. You say, but Vince, I don't need all these grays. I want something that really looks white. Okay, that's fine. We'll start up a little bit higher. I'm gonna take a little bit of that Arctic, mix it with a touch of that rubber. By the way, I'm happy to use these colors. Nothing about any of these. I, I picked these completely at random and tried to use a bunch of different brands to show you that anything is possible. Like, you can use any kind of paint you want for this. It doesn't, doesn't matter, okay? So I'm just gonna bring it all up. And what's, this is one of the big keys with doing white, is you don't go straight to the white. You start with a nice gray, okay? because white is very rarely white. If you paint in pure white, you've got nowhere to go. I got nowhere else to go, okay? And you wanna have somewhere else to go. You wanna have you know, a higher color to highlight up into. So we should be reserving 
our pure white for our highest highlights. We can still make something really, really bright that will feel and look white regardless. So here I'm just, I mixed a little bit of my white gray into my actual white and into my gray. And I'm just kind of going to pull that down. We're going to get real bright on this. Okay. Now, here's where we get to some of the secret tricks. So secret trick numero uno. When working with pure white paint, especially if you happen to be working with a brand that's naturally very dry, one of your great tricks is this little guy I had hidden back here in plain sight the whole time. Badow! Gloss varnish. I know what you're thinking. You can also use gloss medium, by the way, but varnish is fine. I know what you're thinking, but Vince, varnish is for the end of my minis. Nope. We can mix in a little gloss varnish with our white. And what that's going to do is actually just keep it nice and smooth. Once you've got a little gloss varnish in there, it won't chalk on you. I can drag it over big distances, I can paint for a long time with it, and it doesn't go chalky. That varnish, that gloss varnish, is going to keep it together. It adds a thickness to it that keeps it nice and flowing and prevents it from hitting that chalkiness. So what you're able to do is just sit there and keep applying your white. And just bring it up and up and up. And we don't have to spend a lot of time on layers. We can just knock it out pretty fast. can work a little blue in there still. I can work some darker gray in there if I want to for some shadows. That's fine. Doesn't hurt anything. But I can take that white and get real strong with it. And you notice it's not going chalky on me. It's staying smooth. It's applying cleanly. Right, and I get a nice, bright, white cloak. Okay? So, the first super trick, so, you know, I suppose trick the first is your zenithal priming. Trick the second is make sure you're not going straight to your pure white. Leave yourself some room. Work in some near whites in your shadows, some grays, right, whether it be they warm gray or cold gray, then go up to your white, okay? Um, so trick the third, gloss varnish or gloss medium or whatever. Again, I happen to be using the Vallejo stuff here. You can use whatever, um, but gloss varnish will do the trick. It'll keep your white nice and smooth. It'll actually keep it looking brighter. White doesn't actually turn glossy very easy. So like because of its natural chalky nature, it's going to resist turning glossy. If I mixed the same amount with like black paint, what I would get is a very glossy black. It would look like super reflective and look weird. But white is meant to reflect everything. Just like like that just like the gloss paint. So you don't actually get the normal conflict you get when you start working gloss into stuff where it starts lighting up and reflecting where it shouldn't. Because guess what? White's already quite reflective. So you can use it as an excellent medium, be it, as I said, the varnish or the uh, or actual medium, with a lot less challenge. Okay, so all that's fine. I'm gonna let that guy dry here, and I'll talk about, and I'll set up the, the final trick to painting white. Your, your final super secret painting white trick. Maybe I should name this video like, uh, like top five secrets to painting white. You know, I can do something like that. That sounds too buzzfeedy. Probably just call it tricks to painting white. I mean, you know, you're watching this in the future. Hello. So now we're going to talk about the last secret trick for painting white. I'm going to set this guy down for a second so he can dry. And that is this stuff right here. Um, not this necessarily this particular brand. It can be anything, but I, I happen to like Golden, but there's lots of brands that make this type of thing. Um, so this is a Artist Color Heavy Body Acrylic. 
This is not like a craft store paint or something like that. This is artist paint. Um, here, like if you flip it over, it has this little rating on it. And one of the things you'll notice is when we talk about our transparent to opaque scale, it's very high up on there. In fact, you can see the rating right on the front because they give you this little sample of how well it covers these black and white lines. If you just, you know, rush over it like that. Um, you'll notice it's about right in the middle on the matte gloss thing, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Now, the, my, the, my favorite one is there, the tinting. Tinting is a measure of how much whiteness is in something. Um, high tinting, you don't say, it's the color white. Um, golden acrylic, these, these heavy body acrylics are super pigment rich, okay? Um, and it's the artist stuff. So you can get the stuff off Amazon, you get a giant tube of it. It is, you know, like it's a little expensive vis-a-vis, -vis, say our normal paints. That is to say if you're just literally taking dollars against dollars, but if you're talking about dollars per ounce or per milliliter is a better measure, this stuff is still cheaper than miniature paints. Um, to use this stuff, you really wanna use a wet palette. Um, you can just dab it out on your wet palette as I did there. You can use the back of your brush and sort of just go and get some of it out, set it down on your wet palette and then go. This stuff is smooth like butter. This is my favorite white. I, I recently started trying this stuff about a month ago and I'm completely addicted. Um, it's amazing for like loaded brush stuff. Uh, we're not gonna do that in this particular video. I'll do another video where I show you the, the loaded brush aspect. But if I grab a little flow improver and get that in my, my brush, and then I just kind of work this out here the way I work the white on here for this, this will give me such a brighter white than anything else and so smooth. So I'm literally just gonna push some down here on the mini, okay? In the places I want the white to be. So I'm just gonna kinda get that white in there where I want it to be real white. And I'm gonna kinda wipe my brush a little, get some of the excess off. And I'm literally just gonna start feathering that out. Normally white feathers really poorly, okay? If you've ever tried to paint white, you then you try to like feather it at the end, you know that it's just, it's so poor in how it feathers. But this stuff, like a dream. Because it's so thick and because it's so pigment rich, what we can do is we can just place it in a few areas where we want that bright white, okay? And then we can just kind of wipe off the excess and start feathering that out. And it's just gonna smooth out, and just roll out like butter. And again, because it's so pigment rich, it's such a sharper, starker, cleaner white. So like if I were doing stormtroopers or something like that, this would absolutely be an investment I would make. Let me just say that. Still blends, you can still use it, mix it with normal, you know, normal quote unquote acrylic paints. That is to say like whatever your your miniature paints are, there's nothing like that. This isn't really a product review, I'll we'll do that at some point in time. But um, for me, it's just such a great trick to painting white because what you can get there is just a nice, smooth, clean white. Right, so we've just got, whether we start very dark, like let's take, I'll show you here on his leg, since that's the last part of him in this image that's still like that. I'm gonna take his leg and make it like, get some real nice gray down here in the shadows. Okay, so you can see we turn his leg very gray. Now I'm gonna get some of my, my white going here. Some of my artist white. And then I'm just gonna, while that paint's still wet, I'm gonna come in and lay that in to all those spots I want nice and highlighted. And you see how it just starts blending itself into that wet paint so easily and so smoothly? All right? I can come back in, grab another little dab, 
A little dab will do ya. And it's got this nice thickness that we can just push it around on the miniature and achieve that effect we want, right? So we get that nice transition into that gray without much work. At the same time, I can go the opposite direction. I can grab some of my darker gray, push it in there. And because that artist acrylic takes a little bit longer to dry, I can then just blend it right in there. Smooth like butter. Right? So, there you go. There's your, your painting white. As you can see, like, white isn't a scary color. The key with it is really a few things. One, don't start at white paint. End at white paint, right? Make sure that you have, you've decided if you're gonna be warm or cold and lay those shadows down first, okay? Two, don't paint white over pure black. Just don't, don't do it. It's not a good idea. It's a bad idea because what's going to happen is it's gonna look chalky, it's gonna look bad, it's gonna take forever to build up, you'll be wasting your life, you're dying slowly, mortality is a thing. That got dark. Uh, no, just, you know, if you're gonna do, if you, even if you don't have an airbrush, even if you can't rattle can prime, just give it a good dry brush of a mid gray or a high gray or something like that, or even just a pure white, that's fine, whatever. Start, make your life easier. Three, uh, if you're using your, your artist, or sorry, your, um, your miniature paint, white paints, great trick, mix in a little bit of gloss medium, gloss varnish, something like that. That will keep your white smooth and clean the whole time you put it on there. And it won't really turn it glossy. You might occasionally get a little gloss where if you kind of rotate it around, you can see a little bit of a shine, but it's honestly pretty rare. And if it does happen, you know, you're, hopefully you dull coat your miniatures at the end or whatever anyways. So it's gonna knock that shine right back out of it. So that's fine. And then finally, uh, my favorite particular trick is honestly uh, for the uh, artist's heavy body acrylic white. Again, there's a lot of different brands in the market. I happen to like the golden, you can use whatever you want. Um, there's many valid brands out there. And uh, that's such a, with that white, it's so much more pigment rich. It's so much more dense in your color it really gives you a completely different experience. You, you're more painting on the miniature. It's like, you're not painting the miniature, you're painting on the miniature. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the idea is you're laying down some paint on the miniature and then pushing it around, right? And because it's so thick and pigment rich, it doesn't go chalky, it doesn't go thin. You still get a nice smooth coat. So there we go, just that quick. We've got our nice uh, snowy white rat assassin. Rat, rat, yeah, rat, rat, assassin. There it is. All right, so there you go. That's painting white. Um, just some quick final thoughts uh, with your white is, uh, and when you're doing sort of white clothing or white stuff like this, it often looks good when you have other contrasting elements. So, for example, this will stand out more if I have darker blades and darker skin. Like as you can see now, right now his skin is a fairly dark tone. If you're going to have some part of the miniature be quite bright like this, you wanna make the other components of your miniature darker and pull them back. That way you still maintain your overall contrast because you've limited your contrast here. Um, you know, you're not working in like a blue where you can take it down to a deep, almost black shadow and up to an almost white blue highlight. You've, you've moved yourself, if this is the whole color spectrum, you've limited yourself to just that top part. So establish your contrast in other areas of the miniature instead. Um, Two, when you, uh, just some other sort of just general thoughts on, you know, painting miniatures with a lot of white, is that also looks really good when you set off the white with some other effect. Great for like putting freehand on it, or say putting some dirt on the bottom of the cloak, or, you know, if this were to be white armor, uh, you know, doing like a rust effect on the, where it's something streaked on the armor, or you get the idea. It looks really good when you have some kind of set off color in the middle there that, that again, increases that contrast and makes it look really good. Um, but there you go. That's painting white. As you can see, not as tricky, uh, hopefully, 
uh, as it seems, and hopefully this will help you get some nice smooth white with some nice smooth transitions. But, uh, there you go. Okay, uh, if you liked that, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for more hobby cheating. We have a new video every week, uh, every Saturday. Uh, share this with anybody if they're, maybe you got, you know, somebody who's uh, painting up some stormtroopers or something like that for Star Wars. Or maybe you've got somebody working on uh, a Space Marine chapter that's mainly in white. Or maybe you've got a weird friend like me who just likes white-robed assassins. Uh, in any case, sharing is always the nicest thing you can do and greatly appreciated. But as always, I thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.